Hi everyone and welcome to week two of the Marketers Playbook. This week we're going to be talking about what to think about when picking the right advertising platforms for your business. So getting your platforms right is a key piece of the puzzle when it comes to finding your success in paid advertising. So here we're going to go through all of the different platforms, a little bit of use cases for each of them, looking at the KPIs, what kind of metrics you're looking for, and the reasonings behind why you would choose different platforms. So last week, we talked a lot about our tracking and our audience setup, and that's hugely important moving into this part of the program because you want to think about where your audience hangs out, what your audience is doing on different platforms, what's their behavior when they're actioning or taking action to find your product or your service in relation to a problem they're having, finding that solution. So we're going to dig into that. So some key questions that you need to ask yourself before deciding on what platform you're going to choose is do you need to build brand awareness? And that kind of comes back to intent. And I'll describe that now. So brand awareness needs to be built to a stronger degree when you have a new product or service that people are unaware of. So if you've come up with an idea for a new solution that people aren't familiar with, you need to build their awareness to a stronger extent first than just being a new brand in the space that's offering a solution that's somewhat somewhat replicated in the sense that they already are aware that that solution is available to them. Maybe there's a slightly different USP or unique selling point to it, um, but it's essentially the same. So we'll think about that here. Do you need to get a return on investment early? If so, you really need to be strategizing around high intent conversion based platforms. Do you need to be thinking about a long lead time? Do you need multiple touch points? Do you need people to be thinking about you for a few months before they convert? And that can really happen in the B2B environment. Where does your target audience spend most of their time? So that's a huge part of this as well. What, who is your target audience and where are they hanging out? And how do they behave when they're looking for a service like yours or a product like yours? Do they search for it? Do they typically just come across it? Is it an impulse buy? Is it something they need? Is it something they want? And how do they behave accordingly? So the first thing to really take into consideration is the cost versus the intent. So how I like to position this to people is Google Ads. That's a great example, right? So you get someone to search for something, someone searches it and your ad comes up. That's extremely high intent because the user has taken action to look for the solution. They're actively seeking it. The intent is high. On social platforms, in contrast, what you will find yourself in the position of is putting an advert in, some, in front of someone who might like it or who might want it. So the difference there is the option of getting someone to impulse, go through the process because they want it or might need it and you're just putting it in front of them. Um, but it's a might scenario. Whereas with Google ads and higher intent platforms, you're putting something in front of someone who's actually actively seeking that out. And as you can see here, there's an array of different costs and attempts associated with different platforms. These tend to move around a little bit. I wouldn't take this as like the absolute of anything, but for example, Google ads is high cost because the intent is high. Now you can get Google ads on the cheap if you have a nice little niche and you get your keywords right. So there's the, you can strategize to this as well, but it's good to think about the, the level of intent on the different platforms. LinkedIn, again, high intent, strong B2B audience, but again, very expensive. Facebook, Instagram, your socials, they're kind of more a little bit medium intent. Okay, someone, the data and the quality of the data is typically there for you to get in some front of people who are wanting, needing things, but they still only might like it. So it's kind of middle ground. Twitter then is typically on the lower end in terms of the intent. Um, by, by virtue of that, it's also typically the cheapest platform. Um, so you can look at your cost versus intent. Um, and this is all typically in relation to actually getting conversions. I mean, if you could spin this on its head and say, okay, well, if I'm not looking for intent, I'm looking for like really strong awareness. I want multiple touch points. You could leverage some of the cheaper platforms to do that. So that's why we ask ourselves that quest those questions in advance when we're thinking about cost versus intent and what level of intent we're looking for from the user. So there's lots of pros and cons to each of the platform. These are some of the high level ones just to get you thinking. So Facebook and Instagram, 
first of all, they're running from the same ads manager as I mentioned before, but they are different in their in 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 how they they work in terms of the platforms. But you can you can you can use the same ads manager for them. Facebook, first and foremost, massive audience base across all demographics. Facebook is king of data when it comes to this. Google as well, but Facebook is it's very good in terms of a, for a medium intent platform. Still to this day, vast majority of conversions that um, I see coming in come from the Facebook feed uh, specifically. Sometimes the Instagram feed will outperform if the audience is more geared towards Instagram. But as a general rule of thumb, as I see a Facebook and Instagram campaign rolled out where it's all in the one ads manager and it's rolling across both flat platforms, typically Facebook is still outperforming. Massive audience base across all demographics, but the cons right now, and we talked about this in the tracking session last week, is that it's heavily impacted by privacy changes. Instagram, same. You can leverage lots of data from Facebook because it's part of the ecosystem and you can target your niches very nicely. The demographics on there are really honed in as well, but again, heavily impacted by the privacy changes as a, res- as a kind of domino effect from Facebook. LinkedIn. Great for the B2B company with a long lead time and high lifetime value. I typically recommend people going into LinkedIn where they're looking at, you know, a lifetime value kind of upwards of 10K really. Um, But it also has very strong use case scenarios and hiring and events and shorter campaigns as well. Um, But it's, and it's directly correlated there to the con. It's it's one of the most expensive platforms to advertise on. Because again, at the end of the day, it's still social. It's still not the intent of someone searching for it. Uh, Yes, you might be getting in front of the right people, but is it the right place and the right time? Questionable at times. So you have to factor that in. TikTok, this is fantastic if you get the creative right. TikTok is very, very heavily focused and the emphasis really here is on the creative. You have to get your creative right and your audience, if it's well suited, can work really, really well. Same con to the same note is that that poor creative performs badly, worse than any other platform. So you could roll out a poor creative on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, it might not do great, but typically stuff trickles in even from a poor creative. Um, But on TikTok, that typically doesn't happen. Snapchat, again, not I don't want to compare it to TikTok, but it can be great to DTC brands. But the metrics I've found from running campaigns in the past can be a little bit inflated. Um... It looks better than it is sometimes in the Snapchat ads manager. It becomes pretty evident when you put UTM parameters in place that it's a little bit difficult. So I'd watch that closely. Also, especially on the European side, Snapchat has gone down the list. Um, it's, it's, it's almost a messaging service now more so than a social service in, in many respects. So the dynamic on the platform has changed. They lost a lot of users, but that is actually growing a little bit in the US. So it depends regionally as well on Snapchat. TikTok, great for awareness and building your brand, especially in the B2B space. Now, it can work in B2C as well, don't get me wrong, but it's also one of the lowest cost platforms, which can be great. But on the back of that, very low intent and your conversions tend to be low. Great brand building, great consideration building even, typically not as strong on the conversion building. Google Ads, this is the creme de la creme of getting conversions for the most part. Um, Nine times out of 10, anyone who I'm seeing running ads across a suite of platforms if they have good problem solution fit and people know have an own it's a known solution that they search for, typically they'll they're getting most conversions from Google Ads unless they're in a really heavily saturated or competitive space where the bids have just gone through the roof. Um I've seen anywhere from five cent, three cent a click through to I think the most expensive one I've come across was twenty four something. Um and that was kind of personal injury, law, anything legal, insurance, um, banking, things like that can can ha- be super inflated. So if you have a product or service that is a known solution to a problem, this is an excellent starting point. But it can be competitive in some industries and bidding dries up the cost fast. And also a con is if you have a new solution, it can be de- very difficult to leverage Google ads in terms of search campaigns because um you don't you don't the user doesn't know to search for you to begin with so that can make it difficult but don't forget as well that google ads also encapsulates youtube display and there's lots of opportunity there for brand building and lower intent campaigns but when you're after the conversions that's that's you want to be thinking about the search campaigns on google you also need to be thinking about your user flow so from start is the user aware problem exists yes 
do they know a brand for that solution already? If not, are you building awareness or pointing out a problem? And then what do you do from there? Are they going to search for a solution? Are they going to search for the brand, another brand? Is it SEO? Is it paid advertising that you need to do? What What is this loop? All of these different touch points you need to be thinking in. What is your lead flow when it looks like this? What is How does the user go through the process? And where can you put in those platforms that are relevant? So for example, in remarketing, it could be great to use maybe Facebook, Instagram, or maybe a lower cost one like Twitter. Um, privacy and privacy changes have impacted remarketing, but you can still leverage it to a degree. Um, so you can look at all of these different elements to kind of go, okay, what level of intent do I need at these different areas? What am I looking for from the user? Where are they hanging out? What's the most cost effective way to do that? So this gives you a little bit of structure around that. When you're looking at your resources and strengths as well, um, they can also determine what platforms you're going to look at. Now, we're all, next week, we're going to be talking about uh, creatives, looking at high performance creatives, looking at what works on different platforms. But you also need to think about your strengths here as well and your resources. Are you an excellent writer? Google ads might be the best way to go if you are or blogging. Um, am I an excellent graphic designer? Great. You're great at creatives. Can you, maybe you're great at creating standout content that's going to work really well on Instagram or TikTok if you're really good at making videos. And if you're not good at these things, do you have the resources to outsource what you need if need be? So you have to think about those as well. Common platform KPIs. So when you're choosing a platform, typically this is the list of in KPIs that you're going to be looking at. So your cost per impressions, your click through rate, your cost per click, your landing page views, cost per acquisition, customer acquisition cost, your lifetime value and the frequency, which is the number of times a user has seen your advert. So these common platform KPIs will give you indicators into how well it's working, um, what you want from it as well. So KPIs directly correlate back to what you're looking for. So you can go after Okay, I want the lowest CPA possible. You want conversions. You need to get your cost per acquisition down. That is a conversion focused, a high intent KPI that you're after. So you might choose a platform based on that as well. But same with CPM, cost per thousand impressions, right? You need to get in front of as many people in this audience as possible. You're trying to build out this new solution. You're looking at brand awareness and maybe you're looking at actually CPM and click to rate. So some of these KPIs, lend themselves nicer to different platforms. Twitter, your CPM is going to be really, really good. It's going to be really, really cheap. It's going to be cheaper than Google Ads for sure. So structuring based on what, what your target outcome is here as well is important. And KPIs can also mean a lot of things when you're actually in the platform. So cost per thousand, all of the advertising platforms are working off of keeping the attention held for the user. How well was your advert resonating with your audience? is is what it can indicate to you and if it's way more expensive than you thought maybe your creative isn't resonating and same with click through rate how willing are people to click on your advert and then you might ask yourself is your call to action okay are people clicking on the advert is it your campaign goal to get clicks or not how many or the same is your call to action okay how many people actually end up on your website so there is a difference between a click and a landing page view because people can drop off in the middle or a click maybe a different element of the ad if it's hugely different from your link clicks, maybe there's a sp page speed issue. Um, it can be different. Don't get me wrong. I've seen um, up to a 50% difference in many circumstances, but I would factor that in. Your CPA, how much does it cost you to require a customer or a lead? Are, you, are your early metrics impacting? Is it the right, right campaign type? What is your actual cost in terms of a CAC? So are you are there other costs? Is the graphic designer you've hired? Is the videographer you've hired? Is the marketer you've hired? So expensive that it's actually driving your CAC up. You know, you have to think of all of these different things. Lifetime value of a customer. So is it effective long term? So if you're selling a product and that product is $40 and your margin is $20 and it's costing you $20 to get a customer, then you're losing every time. Whereas if your lifetime, if your subscription based model, for example, and it's going, you have a $20, $20 margin every single month and the average lifetime user is six months, then that $20 makes sense because you know you're going to get paid back essentially over time. And the frequency then, how often are people seeing your advert and can you change your creatives off the back of that? So creatives can also, or sorry, KPIs can also 
indicate to you what to do or change on a platform as well. So when you're live in the mix, once you've chosen your platform and digging in, your KPIs can mean something to you in terms of like when you start advertising, things go wrong and they can also help you fix those things. So key mistakes people make in early advertising, incorrect campaign setup derails audience performance, messaging not aligning or resonating with the audience, creative assets not resonating, keywords being too broad in Google ads set up or not aligned with a landing page. More often than not, the audience is probably fine and the placement campaign and structuring is what's causing issues. So when you're picking a platform, please make sure to ensure that your campaign structure is going after the right KPIs for your business. Think about your messaging. We talked about the audience. The audience is a huge part of that. Once you have the audience nailed and you pick your platform, next week we're going to be digging into the creative side of things and that's where things start coming together. Aoife is going to co- jump in then and she's going to start guiding you through the landing page process, which is the step after. So an advert will only take you so far. You're only getting people as far as a landing page when it comes to what I do in terms of paid advertising. There's a process that happens after that. Um, the creative, the structure and all of that needs to get people through to a certain action. And then activation is exactly where Aoife will pick up this course and show you, OK, now you've got a user through. How are you going to pull them through your website journey? People don't hate adverts. They hate irrelevant interruptions. So your platform decisions, your audience decisions, all of this is coming back to finding the right people at the right place at the right time with the right message. Um, so next week the right message is what we're really digging into.